Hey, what's up you guys? John from Old Reading Farm here. Thanks for joining us. In today's video, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to actually be building a an arbor. Ann Arbor, get it? Michigan? <laughs> Jokes! I'm going to be building an arbor to house two of our rose plants. And I have no idea how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. One of those things. So, this is what we got. So we're over here. Cat picked a bunch of flowers from here yesterday. It was actually nice to see a bouquet come from somewhere. Um, so we have these two pots right here that lead into our alpaca pasture. And we want to put an arbor sort of right in the middle of them. And we want it to be nice and cool. And, you know, one of the things that we've been trying to do, especially recently, is trying to make our farm look a little bit nicer. Because we've been under construction for like a year now, a long time. And so there's, you know, there's stuff everywhere, scraps of lumber everywhere, you know, my fault and like just a bunch of stuff. Cause every day it's like, okay, what's the next project? All right, what's the project after that? What do we got to do now? What do we got to do today? What do we got to do tomorrow? You know? And so we're trying to nice it up a little bit because eventually we do want to have visitors. And, you know, even if it's somebody who's coming and they're going to pay like five bucks to visit the alpacas or whatever, we want it to look nice. And so if we are going to charge people to come and hang out with our animals, we wanna make sure they get their value. Even if it's something small, we wanna make sure it looks good so that they can get their money's worth. So we don't want it to look like a construction site while they're here. So anyway, this is some wood that I milled a couple days ago. So we're gonna do something kind of cool where we're gonna have, um, you know, so four four by fours, and then we're gonna have a curved top. So we have these four by fours here we also have these big pine boards that we're gonna cut some sort of curve out. So I gotta figure out how to do that. Then we'll have sort of a trellis on either side to help the roses climb on top. All right, so I've gathered most of my materials. So what I have here, I have my miter saw, I have my impact driver, I have my circular saw, I have a jigsaw for cutting the curve, I have a level, I have gloves, I have my slides on for safety, and I have all my wood. So. The main premise here, so there's gonna be, you know, a trellis on either side, and then there's gonna be a curved top, and there'll be some uh, horizontal members going that way, and there'll be four by fours for the posts, and then I'll have two by sixes on the bottom and the top of the posts to make sure they stay, you know, where they're supposed to stay. And so fitting in where we have here, so they're gonna be 32 inches wide, and 52, no, sorry, 32 by 52 on the ground. And then it's gonna be about seven feet, six inches tall, just to make sure that there's plenty of room for me here. First things first, I am going to start cutting my posts to length, and then I'm gonna put the two by sixes on there, and then I will check in. Uh, Catherine came by and she is working hard on making some hats for our craft fairs because they're coming right up and we had a new concept thanks to a family collaboration for these little like what are they baby hats baby hats baby hats let me show you <laughs> look at that ba, 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 da, da. baby hat baby hat ba, ba, da, ba. it's a little double palm action makes it look like little ears what else we got? Well, these, I think all the baby hats we have are pink, but we're also doing them blue with white. So cute. <laughs> I mean, I don't like kids, but put a hat on a little kid like this. Yeah, that's I'm a like, cute little okay, hat. That's cute. Nice. So then all the other hats that we're making are 
half alpaca, half store-bought yarn, and this yarn is Touch of Alpaca, so it's 90% synthetic, 10% alpaca, and then this is like Brownie or Connie or someone. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Looking good. Yes. Have almost 200 hats, right? Probably more than that by now. Probably more than that by now. Very nice. All right, so I have my two sides basically all set. So you can see this is gonna be the bottom. So we'll have these feet down here. We've got them up at the top. So these are what I have for my uh, trellis portion. And these are one by twos that I milled out of spruce. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll attach the long ones on the underside here. And so I'll have two going, like one right here and one right here. And then I'll have the uh, horizontal pieces running on the outside here. But instead of screwing those in, um, I'm gonna go grab my brad nailer because I think it's gonna be much easier to put those in uh, with the brad nailer rather than the screws because I have longer screws and also since these are so thin, they're likely to split. So rather than have that happen, we're do some brad nails. So I'm gonna go grab my air compressor and nailer and I'll be right back. All right, so now we got our vertical beams going. I guess I'll try to clean this up a little bit. That'll come off just fine. It's so one thing I noticed like kind of in the middle of milling. So this was all spruce, so it's a soft wood, but it had a ton of knots in it. And so you'll notice that some of these have some waves. You'll even see in the four by fours, there are some that have some waves in it, which, you know, again, this is outside, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I wasn't, I was originally just gonna put two here, but I figured it really could use three and I have plenty of sticks. So I did them basically like eight inches on center. And then I think I'll probably do a similar thing heading up this way. So maybe what I'll do is I'll mark this one and then I will just uh, go from there. Cause I'm gonna use my miter saw to cut the ones for the short side because that'll just give us a better finished look on the edges. So maybe I'll get this one set and I'll mark it, then I'll put it down on the ground, cut all my short ones and go from there. Right, so I have these all dry fit now, meaning they're just kind of laying there and uh, they look pretty good. They remind me of trellises. So now I'm gonna go through and brad nail them all together. And then comes the real fun part. Well, so I think maybe once I get these together, I'm gonna cut some scrap pieces of wood to get it set up um, where it's gonna go in the future. And then I'm gonna work on cutting like the archway and I'll show you how I'm doing that in a second. Now I'm gonna nail this thing. Nailed it. All 
right, so we have our two sides done. Oh, and now it is time to maybe get them set, set up over there. So I'm gonna see if I can carry them over there and set them up uh, where our trellis is gonna be. So it is not level to the earth, <laughs> but it actually uh, looks pretty good. So now that it's basically done, I just need to add my uh, uh, my arch along the top, which I'm a little nervous about doing, but we'll see if we can do it. I got four big long boards over here and I'll see if I can make this happen. So I have here a piece of poplar scrap. That's probably like a quarter of an inch thick. So I think I'll be able to just bend this. So I put two, I put three screws in here, one dead center and then one at each end. And so if I just put this along one edge and then just kind of bend it around and I should get a nice curve. It's hard to do with one hand, so one second. All right, so there we go. So we got it bent around that screw and then the fulcrum is right in the middle. So I should get a very nice even line from one end to the other. So now I'm gonna take my pencil out and draw it and see what we get. Oh yeah. So these are my previous attempts with the string. And then this is my one with the board. Oh, that looks great. So now I'm gonna come out with my um, jigsaw and cut that out. Well, so what I was afraid of happening did happen. It actually doesn't look too, too bad from this angle, but it's really hard to cut a curve. And I am uh, just disappointed with how this came out. So I think I'm gonna try it again, see if I have another jigsaw blade. All right, so I am really striking out here. I mean, look at how terrible this is coming out. I even tried cutting some relief cuts in here, but this thing is just not doing it. And I don't know if it's just me, you know, it's a poor craftsman who blames his tools or something like that. It's a poor craftsman. It's a poor craftsman. Well, who'd have thunk that the cleanest line I would ever get is just from the circular saw. It's a small enough blade and a gentle enough curve that it just kind of works. So, I mean, that one looks really good. That's the one with the jigsaw, not so good, so. All right, it is finally complete. Catherine is very happy, which is the most important thing. And it does look, it does, it looks good. It looks good. You know, it's certainly a little bit frustrating to put it together, but you know, the first time doing anything like this always is. Um, but in the end, you know, this was pretty straightforward to build. And you know, if you wanted to build it yourself, you really just need a few four by fours, some one by twos, couple of one by sixes and you're basically good to go. So not the bad. I think it came out looking really good. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Give us a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you're thinking as always. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.